how little we know about ourselves. We seem to know so much about other things, the distance to the moon, the atmosphere of Venus, how to put together the most extraordinary and complicated electronic brains, to break up the atoms and the minutest particle of matter. But we know so little about ourselves. To go to the moon is far more exciting than to go into ourselves. Perhaps one's lazy or frightened, or it's not profitable in the sense of money and success to go into ourselves. It's a much longer journey than to go to the moon. No machines are available to take this journey, and no one can help. No book, no theories, no guide. You have to do it yourself. You have to have more energy than in inventing and putting together parts of a vast machine. You cannot get this energy through any drug, through any interaction of relationship, nor through control, denial. No gods, rituals, beliefs, prayers can give it to you. On the contrary, in the very act of putting these aside, in being aware of their significance, that energy comes to penetrate into consciousness and beyond. You can't buy that energy through accumulating knowledge about yourself. Every form of accumulation and the attachment to it diminishes and perverts that energy. Knowledge about yourself binds, weighs, ties you down. There's no freedom to move, and you act and move within the limits of that knowledge. Learning about yourself is never the same as accumulating knowledge about yourself. Learning is active present, and knowledge is the past. If you are learning in order to accumulate, it ceases to be learning. Knowledge is static. More can be added to it or taken away from it. But learning is active. Nothing can be added or taken away from it, for there is no accumulation at any time. Knowing, learning about yourself, has no beginning and no end. Whereas knowledge has. Knowledge is finite. And learning, knowing, is infinite. Learning about yourself, which is, after all, a result, an accumulation, a putting together of so many things, learning about this conditioning is the freeing of it. Learning is seeing. Seeing is perverted, and so there is no actual seeing, when there is choice always based upon like and dislike. There is no seeing what actually is, the fact, when in the seeing there is choosing. You are the accumulated result of the many thousand centuries of man, his hopes and desires, his guilts and anxieties, his belief and gods, his fulfilments and frustrations. You are all that, and more additions made to it in recent times. Learning about all this, deep down and on the surface, is not mere verbal or intellectual statements of the obvious, the conclusions. Learning is the experiencing of these facts emotionally and directly, to come into contact with them not theoretically, verbally, but actually, like a hungry man.